Welcome to the virtual lunch. Today is Wednesday, September 28th, and this is virtual lunch number 650. Our guest today is Suzanne Dinsmore, the Associate Director of Legal Operations at BioChrist Pharmaceuticals, and this is part of our series on smarter contracting with Sirion Labs. I'm Hiran Atani. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Sirion Labs, which is sponsoring the virtual lunch this month. We've had a number of great conversations over the course of the month. We're sort of coming towards the end, but uh, Sirian Labs is a maker of contract management software. So the people that we serve are in the legal community. So this is a perfect forum for us. I started my legal career about 17 years ago as a paralegal. And then I moved into legal operations about seven years ago. I did that at a PM Law 200 firm, both in New Jersey and in the city. And then I moved to Bristol Myers Squibb to an at BMS. I managed a team of 19 paraprofessionals. And as of Monday, I just started a new job as Associate Director of Legal Operations at BioCrest. So I have been given the opportunity to create and build the legal operations function for them. I am law department member number 25. So we are early stages here, but I will be reporting to the general counsel. I'm on the law leadership team and they are sort of very excited to have me dig into the things that they're working on. So I'm excited as well. For me, you know, I feel like my PJ is often a balancing act. I, you know, I, I am trying to find compromise across a variety of stakeholders. And I personally have a lot of fun doing that. I think there are folks who would possibly, you know, that would be stressful for them. I also feel like you have the ability to, I don't know, come up with creative solutions. And if you're in the right organization, they're excited about having them or helping you come up with them. And I think that's a sort of a key element to success. I also think that with an industry like pharma, there is so much regulation and that goes for US and ex-US. And I think that that plays a role in, in wanting somebody with, you know, sort of data and analytical and technology expertise to try to get their arms around sort of all of those tentacles. You have to be very efficient with your time. There's a wonderful video by David Crenshaw on sort of not multitasking, right? He calls it switch tasking and he talks about how in inefficient it is. Another thing that came up um, with uh, David Allen getting things done is, you know, sort of getting those things out of your head, right? So the second you realize that you have something to do, don't add that to your mental load, you know, write it down in a sort of trusted location and do it. One of the things that I found both here at Syrian Labs and at my previous position at Agiloft is that pharma companies and biotech companies are very good prospects for contract management software for some of the reasons that Suzanne talked about. They're very heavily regulated and you know they usually have operations outside the country as well. So they are subject to regulations in different parts of the world both from the supplier side and when they sell stuff. So they're unusual in that they require contract management, even though a lot of times the employee count is very low for those types of companies. They're not you know, big enterprises, but they have a lot of uh, need for that. And the other part of it is the efficiency part, which you talked about as well. There's so much paperwork involved that automating as much as possible as a huge part of legal ops for, for biotech and pharma companies. At BMS, the, you know, the procurement team owned the contract management tool. On my team, you know, we took sort of a first level review of stuff and then it would pass through sort of to a second level review of folks embedded in the different practice areas. At BioCrist, it seems to be more centralized. And so again, you know, that is a strategy that they've chosen. I don't think either is right or wrong, but having technology and being able to automate what you can is, is a key element of 
my day-to-day work for the last seven years. The greatest value that I found in using technology is to ensure that the technology solution, you know, is complementary to the strategic plan, that leadership buys into it, and that it solves the user's issues. I actually got a design thinking certificate a few years ago. And part of the reason why I pursued that was because it gave me a better idea of understanding the the user's story, right? And putting myself in their shoes. So I think sometimes folks are quick to buy a technological solution without sort of ensuring that it actually does meet the needs of all the users involved. So I think that that's a, a key element to success. in in buying technology. I think that for a lot of contract management software, there is a need to customize it to the way that a company currently works. So there is implementation time. What I would say is when when you're working with a vendor, look for somebody obviously who's in the cloud so that the updates that happen, happen automatically and look for a vendor that when they make updates, it's not going to break the functionality in your <laughs> in your workflows, in your work processes. I think right now and sort of in the future, any leader you know needs to have empathy, needs to be a good listener. And then, you know, I also feel like a, a thirst for knowledge is always helpful. Every single day, I feel like there is a new legal tech software coming out, right? Or there is a, a new, term being used. And so, you know, keeping an eye out for those things is key. You know, the last thing would be to try to, you know, continue to cultivate relationships. So, you know, when I joined BMS, literally in my interview, I was told, you know, BMS is a relationships company and you need to build relationships. So I used to be really hesitant to sort of connect with somebody on LinkedIn or reach out to somebody. Those days are gone. So, I just add people on LinkedIn all the time to, you know, as soon as I meet somebody, I add them on LinkedIn. I will say that that has really allowed me to grow my network. And I think that that um, is going to be very helpful as I sort of take on this new role. I am personally a big believer in casting a wide net. Everyone likes to default to having a bachelor's degree, but it's not necessarily a requirement. And so I think that there are lots of roles that, you know, that can be taken away because there's a lot of folks who have learned on the job and are very successful in that. I would say one of the big things that's sort of, I mean, it's been happening for a few years now, legal project management and project management in general. I think that any kind of experience with project management, whether it's a certification or not, will open a lot of doors for you in legal operations. And so I would never discourage somebody from, you know, pursuing something like that. But, you know, I, I think if I were going to you know, hire somebody to, you know, to, to work alongside of me, a lot of the, the key elements would be soft skills. You know, are you entrepreneurial? Are you innovative? Do you ask questions? Those are the things that I think are not as easily teachable, but are very impactful in a, in a role like mine. The way you can, you know, the service models available are changing. No longer is outside counsel the only place to go. You have a lot of um, ALSPs that are available um, and that are competitive. And so I think that plays an impact on sort of what that delivery model looks like. And so the reason why I mentioned that is because there are now questions that you probably get from clients that you're spending, you know, valuable time answering that maybe you don't need to be, right? Maybe you can train someone, whether it's a a practice support person or something to do that, a, a secundi attempt, a box, you know, that can sort of take out some of that wrote work to, you know, give you the time and the capacity for that higher value work. Suzanne Dinsler, everybody! Really, what a great conversation, Suzanne. Thank you so much. We, of course, wish you the very best of luck in your new role. So thanks to you and thanks to Siren Labs for supporting this series on smarter contracting. I hope everyone has a great day.